Hey everybody, Grommel's here with another short War Thunder video. So this one is going to be another one of those videos where I give some feedback about some issues with the game and theorycraft a bit on what might help to improve the game, with some hopefully entertaining dogfight footage in the background. Now the reason for this video is the ongoing discussion about battle ratings. As you probably know, about a week ago a patch introduced some battle rating changes, a rather large list of planes had their battle ratings changed, apparently because of how they performed statistically. This change was revoked again shortly after, supposedly to help with collecting data about other changes in the patch. But the proposed changes still created a large uproar in the community, and for good reason, I would say. Most of the changes were moving the battle rating system even further away from any historical accuracy and led to some rather hilarious matchups, or increased the hilarity of many of the already rather funny battle ratings we have. For example, the A6M20 already has a pretty high battle rating compared to its potential opponents. With a battle rating of 3.3 .3 in simulator battle mode, it is already higher than the FRU-1A Corsair and at the same level than the LA-5F. So the plane is already facing opponents that were introduced quite a bit later and outperformed the Zero by quite a bit when it comes to speed. Still, the Zero apparently performed well, which I have no trouble believing, and because of the current battle rating gets adjustments based on statistics. The plane in the battle rating changes moved up, placing it at a battle rating of 3.7 higher than the F4U and at the same level than the B-47D Thunderbolt, a plane that was introduced much later in the war, has right now. However, the B-47 and the F4U apparently do not keep their battle rating either. The B-47, while already being low in battle rating, is moving further down, from 3.7 to 3.3, and the F4U-1A, one of the fastest propeller-driven fighters of World War II, moved down to 2.7. Which leads to a rather weird situation, where the earliest Zero we have in the game has a substantially higher battle rating than a B-47 T-25 or F-4U Corsair. And those are simulator battle ratings. And that is just one of the examples for rather weird changes, and not surprisingly, that led to some discussion on the forums about the current battle rating system and about switching to a system that is based on historical facts instead and I figured I share a few opinions and thoughts on that, and since I do play mostly simulator battles at the moment, that is the mode I have in mind with this little feedback. Now, I figure there are two basic questions here. One being, does Sky Chin's current statistic-based model work? And the second one I would like to share some thoughts on, would a system based on historic introduction dates work? Well, the first question is answered pretty quickly in my opinion. The current system clearly does not work. The changes that came for a short time in the patch last week are a pretty good proof for that. Planes that were already too high in battle rating moved further up, planes that were already too low moved further down. The reason for this failure has also already been discussed a lot. RamJB made an extensive video about it and I as well as many others agree with it. The current system simply fails to take into account that a lot of the most successful and powerful planes in World War II did need some discipline and skill in order to unlock their potential. The F4U and B-47 are both great examples. Both are very powerful planes, very fast and great divers. However, the speed comes at a price. Those planes don't climb well and are clearly not turn fighters, and if a large amount of players use them as such, their statistic will suffer, despite being extremely powerful if used right. That is also the reason why moving those planes further down in the tech tree will not help them. Yes, they will face slower planes with less powerful engines, but those slower planes usually also turn even better, and having those powerful planes at a lower battle rating also means that they will be available earlier and flown by a large amount of unexperienced players that try to use them as turned fighters. Their statistic will not improve, and what are you going to do then? Keep moving them down till the Corsair fights Ki-10s? 
Interestingly, I am sure a lot of those fast planes that do bad according to statistic would probably do better if you move them up in battle rating, not down, because further up the tree they are more likely to meet opponents that also don't turn well and they are flown by a higher amount of experienced players. Those planes are powerful, but need some know-how to unlock their potential. Finally, I used to play first-person shooters very actively in the past and if this kind of it's powerful but needs skill to use properly was true for the guns in the game, this usually meant the game had a good balance. If the guns that are the strongest are also hard to use and need the player to know what he is doing, you got a good balance. If on the other hand the best gun is also the one that is the easiest to use, you got a bad balance and everyone is running around with the same gun. So with that in mind, I see nothing wrong with planes like the F4U needing a bit of know-how to get the best results, even if that means the statistic of the plane suffers. Anyway, a statistic-based battle rating simply will not work for those reasons. This much is clear to me by now. So what about historic matchmaking? Now I personally would like to see it, especially in simulator battle mode of course, and I also think it would work for the most part with some adjustments. At the very least, I think the balancing would not be any worse than what we have right now and have the benefit of historical accuracy, which is something a lot of players want. Now, Gaijin seems to so far seem to take the view that historical accurate matchmaking simply will not work. The example they bring to prove their point, however, seems so far to be revolving around the B-17 bomber. You probably heard about the B-17 vs I-15 example from the forum, which states that the B-17 and I-15 were built at the same time, but the I-15 would not be a match for the B-17. And historic matchups therefore do not work. There's another one on Reddit that is similar but replaces the I-15 with a Ki-43. Now, there are two big problems with this argument. First of all, while there were indeed B-17s built in the late 30s, those were very early models, which we do not have in the game. Why B-17s, so early that they still had their prototype designation, and they were substantially weaker armed. They also lacked the tail gun. The second problem with this argument is that bombers in general, and the B-17 especially, at the moment are overperforming. They take too much damage, and in simulator mode they can use third-person view. For that reason, many fighters have currently problems dealing with them. Yet in reality, Ki-43s did attack B-24s, and even though they considered them dangerous targets, Ki-43s did shoot down B-24s. The same thing would be hard to achieve in War Thunder, but the reason is the current bomber balancing. It has nothing to do with the battle rating. That's why B-17s are pretty useless as an argument that historic matchups won't work. If they would have their historical performance, the matchups would work. While Gaijin's forum post further claimed that no balance based on historical introduction date is even theoretically possible. I disagree and I honestly have to say that claiming that it is not even theoretically possible shows a certain lack of creativity. Looking through the forums, a lot of people seem to suggest a matchmaking that takes both plane performance data as well as its introduction date into account with a difference in priority between the three modes, with Arcade having the most focus on performance and the least on introduction date, Realistic being somewhere in the middle with both being important, and finally in Simulator Battle the main focus should be on historic matchmaking, taking mostly into account when the plane entered service. That looks like a good suggestion to me. I know one counter-argument to this often was that the forums only represent a minority of the players and that the silent majority of the players are not even on the forums and have different wishes. Now, that might be true for arcade mode, but for realistic battles I find that already less likely and for simulator battle mode I really can't imagine that there is a huge silent majority that does not know what's going on on the forums. I think that, especially in simulator battle mode, using entry into service would be, for the most part, working very well. Only for some extreme examples like the MA262 there might be some adjustments needed. And more importantly, that is what the majority of the players in simulator battles want. So I think figuring out a way to make it work, if it doesn't work already, should be a priority. After all, I talked to many players that used to play War Thunder and many said that they would come back and give it another try with the historical matchmaking. 
Now let's talk about why I think historical matchmaking would work, specifically in simulator battle, and a few ideas to improve the chances of it working well. First of all, as was already mentioned by others, the different nations back then of course always tried not to fall back in technology compared to the other nations, so in a lot of cases it balances out, because the capabilities of the fighters kept growing at a similar rate most of the time. Also, even less powerful planes had often their advantages, usually in turn rate, the faster the fighters got, the heavier and less maneuverable they usually got at the same time. In some other cases, like Wildcat vs Zero, it might be other things, like dive speed and ruggedness of the aircraft. So even weaker planes had their advantages, and as I said earlier, while more modern planes had the upper hand when used right, they did often require more discipline to use them right and not get in a turn fight. Also, as I said in almost every simulator battle video I made so far, in simulator battle mode, you of course simply don't have the same long range 360 degree perfect situational awareness. You don't have the radar or third person view, so it's much easier for a slower plane to sneak up on a more powerful one, and once the slower but better turning plane is on the tail of the faster more powerful one, it requires some skill to get rid of it in time. Now another reason why I think it would work is simply my personal experience so far. I play mostly events at the moment and one of the reasons is of course to get more historical and in my opinion more interesting matchups. In a lot of those events you can choose weaker planes that were part of the operation and for the most part I don't see them doing that bad. For example, I remember flying an I-16 in the Mostock Malgobek event and giving a squad of 109 F4s a run for their money. In the Corsoon event, you could pick a lot of higher tier planes like Yak 9s, 109G6 and G2, 190s and also the Lag 3. And those Lag 3s did not seem to do bad in this event. As a matter of fact, I can remember a small Lag 3 squad that dominated multiple sessions of this event, shooting down a lot of 109G6 and 190A5s in the process. That's why I think such matchups are far from even theoretically impossible. But of course, there are some issues that need addressing, though I think with some creativity a lot of them could be worked out. For example, if at some time frames one side really shows a constant superiority, a few ideas of how that could be fixed. One simple one, of course, would be to use uneven team sizes, like in event mode. Now, I don't like the uneven team sizes in event mode, but I think that the system in the current event mode has a problem that does not need to be there. In event mode, the difference is fixed at a certain number and does not seem to take into account team size or chosen planes, it's just three planes difference, no matter what. In those events you can often choose between a number of aircraft that have taken part in the battle that is portrayed. That can be the best plane that was available at the time or also some outdated ones that took part. That is, as far as I can tell, not being taken into account. If a lot of people in a match where they could use a 109F instead fly a MC200 for example, the difference in team sizes remains the same. This could be changed to better take that into account. For example, some late I-16 versions and Yak-1 fighters were produced at the same time, so they would be in the same time frame. Now, the planes could be assigned different values within this time frame, so if you have a team that mostly flies Yak 1s, it would maybe have one or two planes less than a team at the same time frame that has mostly I-16s. That is, if the Yak 1 actually turn out to produce better results. I could imagine that the better turning I-16s actually won't do that bad. Now, that would mean of course that you would need more players for a slightly weaker plane, than for the more powerful ones, which is a problem and one reason why I am not such a big fan of different team sizes. Still, there would of course be measures you could take to improve that. A very simple example would be to give out bonuses when you shoot down a plane that is considered to be better than your own in this time frame. You might get some extra money and research points for it, and at the same time, if you get shot down by a plane that is considered better than your own, you might get a reduction of repair costs. Also, you could give out research bonuses in general for flying a plane that is considered to be an underdog at a certain time frame. And also, maybe if you get kills while flying planes that are considered the underdog in this time frame, you maybe can unlock decals for doing so. 
I for one would enjoy getting a special decal for shooting down lots of Spitfires in a MC200 for example. Another thing that could be done, and that idea I got from MechWarrior Online, is if you press the battle button or hover the mouse over it, the server could give you a suggestion about what plane to fly. Now what I mean by that is, to stick with the same example, let's say you queue up in a BF109 that in its time frame would meet Lex 3s and I-16s for example, and let's say there are fewer of those in the queue than BF109s. There could be a small pop-up around the battle button saying, to reduce waiting time at this tier consider flying a I-16 Type 27, for example. Now if you really do that would be up to you of course. Maybe you just want to fly the 109 to level it up. But someone else might have just picked the 109 for fun and after seeing the smash hits says to himself, you know what, I haven't flown the i16 in a while and a lower waiting time sounds nice, so why not? And maybe again there could be a small bonus to research time or income if you actually take the suggestion. All those things on their own would maybe just have a very small impact, but combined may add up. The upcoming extended mission system might also help to achieve better balance, as the missions could be tweaked to take the difference in plane performance in the battle into account. To for example give the side that has better ground attackers more missions to cater to this. But we will have to see what is possible with this in the future. Now last but not least, one last thing I would like to suggest. Give us the opportunity to test it. We heard from some sources historic matchmaking is impossible and I and many others disagree. Why not let us test it, on the test server or the nightly server you used for ground forces? There are already good community made tech trees available on the forums, like Subrine's thread in the simulator battle forum. Why don't we just try it for a few weeks on the nightly server and see how well it works and what would need to be done to make it work if it doesn't right away? Well, those are my thoughts on historic matchmaking. Let me know what you think about it. Well, and this is it for this video. I hope it was informative, thanks for watching and maybe I'll see you next time.